You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome to My Dog Digs Dirt. I'm Lauren Collier. They may be one of the most versatile breeds of dog. In fact, they may be the oldest breed of dog. They are powerful swimmers, are used in water rescues, have served as mascots during the war, first mates to fishermen, even nannies to small children, and some reports claim one even saved Napoleon from drowning. The Newfoundland is a proud, strong, multi-purpose dog. And today, on My Dog Digs Dirt, we find out more from Judith Marshall, president of the Colonial Newfoundland Club. Stay tuned. It's hard to find time for your furry family member. That's where Camp Bow Wow comes in. All day play and overnight camp, daycare and boarding for dogs. Everything is included. Large play areas for fun and exercise. Spacious cabins, comfy cots, even live camper cams to watch from a computer or smartphone. Camp Bow Wow offers the best care and is the place to go where a dog can be a dog. For locations and more information, visit CampBowWow.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We are back, and you are listening to My Dog Digs Dirt, and my very special guest is Judith Marshall, President, Colonial Newfoundland Club, and former treasurer and membership chair. She's been a member for 20 years, and Judith not only has a 155-pound Newfie named Enzo, she also has two other dogs, two cats, chickens, roosters, and a parrot. So uh, you're obviously a wonderful animal lover, Judith. Yes, I am. I've never thought I would be so fond of chickens, but actually, (laughs) I'm not a very good farmer. They're like pets. (laughs) <laughs> I love that. And, you know, I also love the story of how you got your first Newfie. So since we're going to be talking about Newfies, I'd just like to touch on that briefly because it's it's sure. just really terrific. You were a single gal, you said, right? Right. And did you want me to explain it? or? Yeah, sure. I'd love oh, to. me. Okay. So here I am, a, a single woman who uh, <laughs> loves to go hiking and camping, and I'm an amateur paleontologist, so I was always going off to rough places. And uh, I never thought much about it, but people would say, what, you're going alone? You know, aren't you scared? And I guess I was too dumb to be scared, but uh-huh. eventually... I thought it might be a good idea if I had a companion, a reliable companion. So, and I thought a, a big dog might be intimidating to, you know, any That's anybody who was going to bother me. And so I uh, researched large breed dogs and uh, I fell in love with the Newfoundland for their gentle, sweet disposition. But at the same time, they're so big and I wanted a black one. So I thought a a very large black dog would probably scare off anyone intending uh-huh. to do us any harm. Uh-huh. And uh, and it was the best choice I think I've made in a long time. Well, perhaps since I, I did get married, that was a good choice. Too. I was going to say, and then you found your husband. So that's right. a great, it's such a great story because it's so easy to relate. I, I so understand. I mean, I think I told you I have a Bouvier, so um, yes. I was in the same position. But uh, I am a huge fan of uh, Newfoundlands, and I know that uh, our listeners will want to hear more because they, they're fairly rare. Would you say that, Judith? I would say yes. They're not real common. They, I wouldn't say that they're rare, but they are uncommon, and uh, they have uh, they're special dogs, and and they have special needs. And people who get them need to be aware of what they're getting into. And I think that's true with any breed. I know, you know, the Bouvier, you know, I often say that to people who stop me and I say, oh, they're great. But, you know, you have to really be aware that, uh, you know, you have to train them and be, you know, conscious of what goes into the breed. So let's talk about uh, the Newfoundland breed. Let's give people a general overview first, because they are large. I'm even surprised they're bigger than my Bouvier and she's about 132 pounds. 
Oh, is she? Wow. Oh, she, she's well, chubby. She's chubby. Oh, she's but. chubby. <laughs> oh. But when when I've seen one and they're together, I said, oh, she looks like a shrimp compared. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the Newfoundlands also, they have a double coat, so they often appear even larger than they really are. The females tend to be anywhere from, say, 100 and... 10 to 130 pounds, and the males, of course, are bigger. They will go from 130 up to about 160. So they're on the large side, definitely. But they're well, definitely, they're a giant right. breed. Yeah, right. they're considered a giant breed. I often hear of them as the gentle giants. Oh, yes, right? that is so true. You know, the story Peter Pan has a dog in it named Nana. Of course. And and people who have seen the cartoon always think that it's a St. Bernard, but actually, Nana was modeled after the author's Newfoundland. Okay. Yeah, wow. So, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's fantastic. But, uh, yeah. So they're very sweet, and they're very gentle, loyal, devoted, low-key. They have a low okay. metabolism, so what that means is they really like to lay around. <laughs> but also, I mean, they're incredible swimmers oh oh, well yeah right well they are incredible swimmers they are a water dog and one of their original uses they're indigenous to north america okay but when the sailors came over the sailing boats they became the ship's dogs and it was very rare that in the 17th, uh, 18th centuries, a boat a ship would not have a Newfoundland on it. They worked on fishing boats, and they would retrieve things that fell in the water, including people. They could pull the boats. If the seas were rough, the sailors would give a line to a Newfoundland. He'd jump in the water. He'd swim to shore with the line so that, that the boat could safely be brought in. When the ships docked, the fishing boats docked, they would pile their catch into carts, and the Newfoundlands would uh, pull the carts to the market. Unbelievable. A couple of years ago, I, I hosted a show called Pet Talk, and that was sh- it was a TV show. And we did a segment in Mystic at the museum there, uh, the Mystic Seaport. They had a sea dog exhibition, and it was so funny, Judith, because we did a little thing with a Newfie who was supposed to save the PR guy at the time, but his, his uh-huh. owner said, you know, he's a little out of practice, Lauren, but, you know, we'll do it because we're doing the exhibit. And, you know, it took like 50 outtakes. The guy was, you know, in the water and the dog kept uh, coming, like he'd go a little out, then he'd come in, he'd go out. Then finally, of course, uh, he retrieved. Yeah. And it was amazing because, as you said, he just took the rope and pulled the guy in. The guy was at least 160 pounds. No problem. Oh, yeah. I ne- it was unbelievable. Right? And they're also active in rescue as far as Coast Guard and things like that. Yeah, they are. They're called water rescue dogs. In some European countries, they're used as lifeguards. Amazing. Beaches. In Italy, there's a, a film clip that I just love to show people. It shows Newfoundlands jumping out of helicopters into the water to perform yes. rescues. So, people have to Google that. People have to go on the Internet and find that. I think I've seen that, and it was amazing, yeah. amazing. It, it is and amazing. It, it, the seas were, like, high, and I'm thinking, what on earth? Now, is it true that this might be the oldest breed of dog? I've heard that. Well, you know, it may easily be. They're indigenous to North America. It's thought, there are myths about it, like uh, the Indians called it a bear dog. So the myth was it was part wolf, part bear. There's a myth that the, it came over with the Vikings. But in reality, it, it was a, a native breed. It was probably smaller, mm-hmm. but it gained its size most likely from a mastiff, either from the Portuguese fishermen bringing their Portuguese mastiffs to the New World, or Newfoundlands were taken to England, and it could be that the what they called the estate dogs, which were the mastiffs, were bred with them, and that increased their size. 
Wow. And I know even, I think, didn't Robert Kennedy have one? Oh, he did. He yes. had one. Right. His name was Brumus. Uh-huh. And it's kind of ironic. Brumus did not have the typical great temperament of the Newfoundlands. Uh-huh. And he would go in, into Robert Kennedy's office when he was the attorney general. And actually, you know, he'd have meetings in the office and people were kind of afraid of Brumus. Uh-huh. So. So he wasn't really a great example. But you, did you know that uh, the Lewis and Clark expedition included a Newfoundland named Seaman? Oh, no. Wow. Yes, yes. And Seaman went with them, and he would catch beaver and things for them to eat. At one point, Seaman was kidnapped by the Indians. Oh, no. Yeah. And so uh, Lewis, he was Lewis's dog. And Lewis went out and had to get him back. So. Oh, my goodness. See there. That is so great. I love that. I love the history. It's, oh, it's yeah. so terrific. Now, what about, okay, so listeners who are thinking, maybe this breed is for me. You mentioned the temperament. They really have a wonderful temperament. Are they good around kids? Do they need a lot of training? I mean, what dog doesn't, right? And do yeah. they come in different colors and, and shapes, Judith? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll, first I'll tell you they are wonderful around children. As big as they are, they seem to sense when they should be gentle. They're very good around old people. My last two Newfoundlands were therapy dogs, and we would go into nursing homes and visit. Wow. And they're great therapy dogs because people in beds and people in wheelchairs don't even have to, you know, lean over to pet them. Absolutely right. <laughs> so, and, yeah, they come in, uh, the most predominant color is black. My noofs have, have been black. But there are beautiful browns, grays, which is very uncommon. And then there's a black and white Newfoundland called a Lanseer. Oh, and yes. they are named Lanseers because uh, an English painter named Sir Edwin Lanseer painted them. There's some famous paintings of Newfoundlands, and uh, so the Landseer, which is the black and white Newfoundland, is named after after that uh, painter. And they're all so beautiful. So they all have the double coat then. So oh, guess, yes, they do. So now they, they would be a breed that would need to be groomed a lot, Judith, or uh, no? No, they do need to be groomed a okay. lot. You have to keep up with the grooming, too. It's recommended that you... You groom, say, 15 minutes a day, and then you'll stay on top of it. But they do have uh, that very thick undercoat that sheds. And if and if you don't comb it all out, the mats can right. be really bad. So you don't want it to get to that state. The ideal person or family for a Newfoundland is one that is not house proud. Because, <laughs> the, you know, people, when they see me with, with my Newfoundland, they say, oh, do you like that dog in the house? Well, they are definitely house dogs. They need to be with their people. They drool a lot. Right. <laughs> so uh, mine mine always wear bibs, not just because oh, it looks cute, but, it, you know, it keeps <laughs> them nice and clean. Are they easy to train to, Judith? Yes, they are easy to train. Like any dog, as you said, they need to be trained because okay. there's nothing worse than a you know 150 pound right. dog that's jumping on you. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you, my second Newfoundland, Enzo, my present Newfoundland, who's right. a rescue, he came into rescue at two years old after going through a couple of owners, and they said that he was obnoxious and aggressive. Mm-hmm. So that put, you know, some right. trepidation. In. But what actually was happening, he was unneutered, uh, untrained, unsocialized, and he would see right. people, he'd get excited, and he would jump on them. And right. he would also hump them. So, <laughs> so, yeah, they need training from the time they're a puppy. They they take easily to training. They're very eager to please. A puppy, of course, has that puppy energy and can be distracted. But, yeah, you definitely want to, want to train them. And that's so important because it's not the dog. Usually it's the person. And that's a prime example, your Enzo, because he's a great dog. He just needed a little direction, I think. Exactly. He just okay. needed... Just a little direction. Uh, Judith, we're going to take a short break, and my dog, Mr., will be right back. Ooh, get the stick. 
stinky dog away from me. Bad breath and bad gas. PD stopped eating. All his hair fell out. Itching, licking, missing fur. At least $5,000 in vet bill. Creams, antibiotics, sprays. No results. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. If you want the dog to be healthy, you got to feed it something healthy. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Dynavite is nutrition. The shedding is stopped and the itching is stopped. Her coat is not soft, it's silky, it's healthy and shiny and glossy. She's got life, she's got energy. Tons of energy, no more bad smell. Dynavite's the bomb. <gasps> Dynavite is the best thing that's ever happened to my dogs, you know, besides me, of course. <laughs> 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. Dynavite for life. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. Amazing Pet Expos is coming to a city near you. Admission is always free and your pet is welcome. Shopping, adoptions, free nail trims, discounted shots and microchipping, agility, a pet costume contest, and much more. Plus, meet the guys from Animal Planet's hit TV series Tank and Pit Boss online at AmazingPetExpos.com. Bring your pets to the Pet Expo. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. My Dog Digs Dirt is back. We're here with Judith Marshall. She's the president of the Colonial Newfoundland Club. So glad you're here. I just love uh, the Newfoundland breed, Judith. As I told you, I have a Bouvier, but I'm thinking about hopefully adopting a second. And um, I know that your club, we've talked about the breed a little bit, Mm -hmm. but I want to talk about your club because, first of all, you have a wonderful website uh, where people can go and see your activities because not only does it explain all the different activities that a Newfoundland owner can become involved in, you're also big on education and rescue. Let's talk about those. Why okay. do you feel it's so important to, you know, get the word out about the breed and uh, the wonderful points and all the points? Well, we get the word out about the breed and, and we often will focus the things that are the health problems yes. and, and the things that can go wrong because we don't want them coming into rescue. So people need to know what they're getting into. Some of the health problems of the Newfoundland, and by the way, I recommend anyone who gets a Newfoundland to get pet insurance. Oh, oh that's interesting. Okay. It's when they're young, right? when, when Ideally they're young. when they're young because then you don't have pre-existing conditions. Okay. And it will cover all their different ailments. You know, the Newfoundland tends to hip and elbow dysplasia. They have a, uh, a heart problem that is called subvalvular erotic stenosis, hard to pronounce. Uh-huh, it's a pretty good. <laughs> yeah, thanks. It's a defective heart valve. Okay. They tend to bloat as any ex- large, deep-chested dog will. They tend to get, unfortunately, cancer of the long bones. That's what happened with my uh, Newfoundland Alfie. And uh, they get ruptured cruciate ligaments. So those are some of the, the major health problems along with, with the regular health problems that any dog can get. But I think it's important so, that you point that out. I love that, yes. that you do that. And so clearly that somebody is knowledgeable of that before deciding to buy or or to adopt. Yes. Yes, I caution anyone who wants to buy a Newfoundland to do do your research, make sure you get a really good breeder and you can get that information say by going to the Newfoundland Club of America website will have links to regional clubs and the regional clubs will often have lists of, of uh, their breeders. So you want to make sure that you get a good breeder who's going to breed to avoid health problems. Absolutely. And a good breeder will also be there for the new owner should they need help or, you know, have questions or problems. And don't be afraid uh, to ask questions. Yes, definitely. Oh, no. You, you should ask your questions. We get a fair amount of dogs that come into rescue. I, I actually, to prepare for this, I looked at our records and we average about 18 Newfoundlands a year. 
wow. that come into rescue, which may not seem like a lot compared to other, you know, more common right. breeds, but for us, that's a good number. And they come into rescue. A lot of them are not in good shape. They've uh, they've been neglected. They have health problems, and they come in because people say, "Oh, I didn't such a cute puppy. I didn't realize it would get so big." Well, yes. you know, you, you got to know a Newfoundland is is going to be big. So that's why people really need to be educated about the breed before they get one. They Absolutely. need to know that you know there are high costs associated with a Newfoundland. And, you know, people will say, oh, he must eat like a horse. But it's not that. They don't eat that much. They don't eat any more than a, a Labrador retriever. But when they go to the vet, the vet bills are usually high. If they yes. need antibiotics, they need a lot of them. So, you know, people have to be aware of that because we do get dogs into rescue where the people just couldn't afford to keep them. Yeah, it's and uh, we are very lucky in our club. We have a great support system for rescues. Our members, they they donate to rescue. Our rescue chairperson, Donna McCann, has a, a great network of volunteers who uh, do various things from fostering to transporting to training, grooming. That's um, great. I mean, yeah. And that shows, you know, how important your club is and uh, the fact that you're so involved in the breed as well. So for oh, yeah. those who are listening who might be interested in adopting, you must go to the web page so you can see some of these beautiful dogs and also maybe, you know, talk to some of the club members and, and learn more about that. You also have wonderful activities. Uh, we talked about how powerful swimmers the Newfoundland is. Um, and so you have activities around that. You have a uh, water tests. Uh, there are also yep. great trackers. You mentioned that your Newfie is in therapy dog. I mm-hmm. know we had one or two on the pet talk show who were dancers. They danced ah. with their, with Carrie. Yes. And uh, she, oh, like, yeah. you know, she was all of like five, two and the dog, there was like three of them and it was so funny. So they really are such a versatile breed, Judith. Yes, I, they are. Right. Just briefly talk about, and they're also involved in draft work. They pull oh, yeah. similar to the Bouvier. Well, yes, yes, I know the Bouvier. I thought if you get a Newfoundland, you can That's right. They'll fit right him in. and the Bouvier up together. Yes, we promote, you know, our club is, is really great. We have a, a component of people who have show dogs, people who have working dogs, and we have rescue dogs, dogs that are just primarily pets. And one of the great things is our show dogs and our working dogs and our pets are often the same dog. Absolutely. You know, the people who have them just, they do a lot of different activities with them. We have seminars for water rescue training, draft training. What else do we have? Handling seminars health seminars. So our club is really great about educating people and letting them know of all the the versatile things they can do with the dogs. And then uh, we have the test where the dogs can get titles, either AKC or Newfoundland Club of America titles for water work and for draft work. In fact, we have a water test coming up in uh, towards the end of August that I would encourage anybody who can see it. It's in uh, Pennsylvania at Cadora State Park. The dogs go there to take the test to get their titles. It's wonderful to see the dogs out in the water doing the things that that you've mentioned. They pull up to three people to shore. They pull boats. They jump off boats. And I'll just tell you the most exciting exercise is... For the Water Dog Excellent title, there's a raft, an overturned raft out in the lake with a person underneath it. The dog swims out to the raft, dives underneath, Amazing. gets the person, and brings them to shore. Don't they have special, their jowls are kind of built in a way so they don't hurt somebody when they're pulling them in? Is that why well, they, yes. is that, yeah? Well, they, they do have a soft mouth. That's uh, it, right. Their jowls, their flus are saggy. That's and it. that has, yeah, I think that has more to do when they're swimming, the water is sort of diverted through the jowls. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. But I'll tell you what that also promotes is a lot of drooling. Ah, so. 
So that's, that's what so you bad. get. In the water, it doesn't matter. But yes, and you know, I think it's wonderful because, first of all, you don't have to have a newfie to come and watch some of these water trials. But no, you don't. You, don't. you will want one immediately. But it just shows the diversity of the things that you can get involved with if you are in a club like yours, Judith, the Colonial Newfoundland Club, because you don't have to have a dog that you're showing necessarily. There's so many other things, and it's so great for a family and kids. And I'm just a huge fan of you. And um, Judith, where can our listeners find you? What is the site, the website, and can they find you on Facebook as well? Yes. Our website address is very easy. Well, first of all, you can just Google Colonial Newfoundland Club, and that'll get you there. But our website name is cncnewfs.com. And our Facebook page is Colonial Newfoundland Club and Rescue. Fantastic. And I really, I encourage our listeners to log on and find out more and come to some of your wonderful activities. Anyone is invited to come to any of our events to meet club members, to see what we do. And our club members are very easy to talk to. And especially if you're looking to get a Newfoundland, that is a good resource. Come to the events, talk to people, and they'll put you on the right track. And then you can see right there and see if the Newfoundland breed is for you. Thank you so much, Judith. It's just a pleasure to have you on the show. You're a wonderful president of the club. I can see why you're president and have been there for 20 years. I know you started as a mere child, though. Oh, yes. (laughs) Yes, Thank you. Uh, So thank you so much. Well, thank uh, you. Yes, and I thank our listeners out there. This has been My Dog Digs Dirt. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.